Welcome to Archaeology ARCY 1002, Archaeology AB and 14C. Little in joke. This is not a usual unit in that it's very skills rich, but it's also theoretically informed. We get our hands dirty, all in the name of science. You can see from this opening slide here, it's a combination of working individually to standards of personal excellence and working in groups towards a particular goal to deliver on a particular task. And then you get to do things like make stone tools and in fact produce your own artifact that you select from any artifact anywhere in the world and use traditional means to make it. In the past this has caused some, some interesting uh, scenarios. We have for example been phoned by the city of Perth asking why my students are trying to burn King's Park down firing their pottery on hot summer's days. But we'll go through all of that, we'll guide you through the process and um, teach you all the safe ways of doing things and how to work with artifacts, how to understand artifacts and in fact how to practice like an archaeologist. So this is your, represents the first steps of becoming an archaeologist, thinking like an archaeologist and doing some of the core tasks that archaeologists tend to do. We like our tech, we do a lot of things like play with drones. On the other hand, we use um, trowels from Bunnings to do our excavation. So we're both a practical discipline and an innovative discipline. And above all, you need to have a lot of fun. Before I go on, it's important to acknowledge that we're on Noongar Wadchuk land. The land has been looked after by people a long time before we came. This unit will help us explore elements of this landscape, but it will range widely throughout the world and throughout time. In terms of who we are, um, we tend to work in groups a lot, um, different kinds of groups, all sorts of stakeholders, indigenous stakeholders, industry stakeholders, other academics, members of the public, schools and so forth. And we also have to work individually um, and be self-motivated and, and work to high degrees of competence. So it's um, exactly what employers want. They want graduates who think critically about the world, who can think their way through problems, who have a series of cognitive skills and a series of practical skills. So this is a, a work integrated learning unit and it'll do you a lot of good to have it and you'll have a lot of fun with the people around you and by yourself. So who's giving this unit? There are three of us. So for all the unit and academic matters, please contact myself. My name is Sven Usman. I'm one of the archaeologists at UWA Archaeology and Centre for Rock Art Research and Management. I've been doing archaeology for quite some time, um, over 25 years, and I'm very happy to share some of my experience with you and, and to learn some new things together with you. And I'm very ably assisted by Ariane Maggio and Jessica Simmons, who are two tutors. They're both postgraduates studying for their PhDs in forensic anthropology, and they've also done archaeology. So you get a lot of value from their knowledge as well. For all the sort of administrative matters, such as which tute group you're in and those kinds of things, our hardworking social sciences and student services staff are available in the social sciences building, so they're one floor below us. So between the two of, of those two groups, um, student services and ourselves, um, we've got everything covered. Any problems in that, please come to the tutors or myself. Um, you can see what our, on the LMS what our, our work hours are and our office hours. Essentially for me, if my door's open, come in uh, and have a chat. If the door's open, don't come in, but it's usually open. And I enjoy, um, I enjoy it when you come in and have a chat. All right, where does all this happen? So we have a number of locations across campus. So every Tuesday, 10 to 12, we have our lectorial. It's a combination of a lecture, there's a little bit of traditional lecture component and then there's a series of interactive activities that the class does. And this happens over here in Maths G18 and on the same day, Tuesdays at various times, we have three tutes. So the first tute group at 12 to 1 is here in Engineering on G11. The second tute group is from 3 to 4 is in Psychology in G40 and the third tute group is in Social Sciences G25 and that's 4 to 5 on a Tuesday. Some days we'll be going to these classrooms for the tutes. Generally we'll have one tute where we explain something like stone tools and how they're made. And then the next week we go and put it into practice. And we put it into practice at one of, of our two experimental farms. So this is where, for example, we'll make stone tools, work with wood, work with clay, do those kinds of things, work with compasses, fly drones, all of that kind of thing. So at 74 Fairway near the Oceans Institute is our first experimental farm um, and we'll tour that uh, in our first lecture or in, our first in your first tute group and also go over to the second experimental farm where we're transitioning, we're in the process of moving from here to here. This one's a little bit hard to um, 
explain, but maybe I'll give you GPS coordinates and you can find it for your shoot groups. Don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll meet at a central point and then we'll go over um, to the, uh, the, the different locations. Um, so on the days we're doing things at the experimental farms, we'll provide protective gear like safety glasses and gloves and things like that. But do wear closed shoes and relatively sensible clothing that you can do work in and that these aren't your sort of Sunday best um, because you're going to get dirty and do you want to wear uh, clothes accordingly. So the schedule is dead simple. Remember this semester is 12 and not 13 weeks long. So we keep it dead simple. We have 12 lectorials and 12 um, tutorials and the details of what exactly we're doing in each one of those is on the LMS, uh, on the ARC Y 102 LMS. Participation is very important for this course. Obviously tutorials are compulsory. Nonetheless, if you come to all of your tutorials, you will qualify for an extra bonus quiz at the, in the last week, and this can add additional marks um, to your grades. Uh, but the lectorials are important as well because a lot of the core concepts will be warming up for the tutes there in essence. So this unit is all about participation. So if you're going to rely on the lecture capture system, well, it's simply not going to capture a lot of what happens in the lecture halls because we break off into little groups and have group discussions and activities and sometimes leave the lecture hall altogether. So we'll look forward to seeing you there. That said, it is still uh, an academic unit and theory and readings are important. It's what your quizzes are based on. So there is no textbook um, for this unit, but we the, the weekly readings are all available through LMS, but we do um, recommend these three textbooks. Um, these are ones that are available in the library. You don't have to buy them at all, but if you're going on with archaeology, these are good additions to your library. So Colin Renfrew and Paul Barn have the standard archaeology textbook. Those of you who took ARCY 1001 will be very familiar with it. Good overview of global archaeology, so good to have. Then we have two others. This one is by two of our members of staff, Jane Baum and Al Patterson, Archaeology in Practice, a student guide to archaeological analysis. We also use this at third year level in our lab methods course, and it's got a lot of good information in it. And then the Archaeologist Field Handbook, um, written by colleagues at Flinders University, Heather Burke, McMorrison and Claire Smith. We use this at 30 in our field methods unit as well. And this gives you a lot of hands-on practical information. Uh, but you don't have to buy these. These are available in the library, available via LMS. They're just good to have. In terms of learning outcomes, I'm not going to go through all of these. I've gone over it in general anyway. This unit is about challenging yourself at a personal level to excel and to have competency in, in basic and core archaeological um, thoughts and actions and, and techniques, um, but also then to work in groups to particular tasks and deliver on those tasks, to work in ways that are safe, that are ethical, that are interesting, and hopefully in some small way make the world a better place. Uh, in terms of assessment, it's pretty simple. Um, quizzes, they are weekly quizzes. There are 10 of them and they are based on each week's readings. These are online, you do them before you come to the lecture, they close when the lecture starts and then they are marked and well, they're marked automatically. I moderate them just to make sure um, there are no mistakes and then you get a grade for that to make sure you know the content for each week. So that's 20% of your grade. 30% of your grade is made up in tutorial assignments. So each week there are also 10 tutorial assignments, either something you bring to the tutorial or something you do while you're at the tutorial, either individually or in groups, and that makes up 30% of your grade. And the other half of your grade, 50%, is made by your artifact assignment and essay. So there's an essay associated with um, the artifact assignment. This, so it's broken up into two parts. The essay explains what artifact you've chosen, why you've chosen it, and how you intend to make your artifact. And then there's your final artifact, um, which you produce later. So the, the essay is, I think, due in week six. Again, it's on LMS. And the final assignment in week 12. The final assignment is the actual artifact with a short document or video diary explaining how you made um, the artifact. I am thinking of adding another assignment, which is essentially designing a new experimental farm. A lot of fun in which you get to design a TARDIS type experimental farm, but I'll let you know more about that um, in our first week. All of this works towards, for example, a class prize. You're a fairly large class this year, so it'll be competitive. 
um, but for that reason it's worth even more and it looks really good on your CV if you're the best student in the class. By best we put three quarters of that is based on academic performance and a quarter based on your contribution to the group and the life of the unit. So you get a certificate and a book prize and a mention in your CV, so nice. In terms of unit support, we want you to both do well and be well. So the LMS has all your course content on and the links to various resources and those kinds of things. Everything you need academically. We are very nicely supported by the library where we have great librarians like Chloe, um, who's a subject specialist librarian and can help you with your searches, particularly things like how artifacts are made. Some of those references can be a little tricky to find. And then there's student services that help you both with your academic endeavours and in your personal life. So we want you to do well and we want you also to be well. Second semester, particularly towards the end of second semester, gets really busy and we want you to look after yourself. So make use of that unit support. Other support is internal um, from archaeology. We've got three um, Facebook pages the Archaeological Society of WA, the Centre for Rock Art Research and Management, Archaeology, and actually a fourth from this year, the Centre for Forensic Anthropology. Um, so there's a lot of information on there about field schools, about new units, about funding opportunities, study opportunities, travel, archaeological news, people handing in dissertations, oh, a whole lot of different kinds of things. It makes sense also to join the ARCSOC, the Archaeological Society of WA, Student organisation goes to archaeological sites, gets experts in to give talks, has movie nights, eats pizza, drinks beer and coffee and that sort of thing. Um, really nice supportive um, environment, so do join them. Ten bucks a year, why wouldn't you? Nationally and internationally there's support, so nationally we have two major organisations, the Australian Archaeological Association and the Australian um, Association of Consulting Archaeologists. These are the professional bodies that govern how we work, the ethics, the practicalities, legislation, all of those things, um, national conference, and you can also join those even as a student. We have weekly seminars every Thursday at 4 to 5. Everyone is welcome to join, learn about interesting things, see who the staff and students in the department are, extend your networks, and there's often a social event after those. So in sum, this is a, a pretty fun course. It combines theory with hands-on practical skills. We range around campus, we build fires, we bash stones about. Um, we try and get into the minds of the people making artifacts way back in the past. You get to select an artifact from a funky period in history. And don't worry if your artifact doesn't look good. As long as you've used traditional methods to make it, you can get a distinction even if your artifact sort of falls apart at the end. We're not expecting perfection. People are not used to working with their hands these days, but it's a very good way of doing experimental archaeology to understand how people worked in the past and to try and get into the minds of those people who worked into the past. So I'll see you soon um, in class and in the tutors, the tutor, tutors and I will introduce you to the local archaeological community, we'll introduce you to how archaeologists think and work, and we'll have a whole lot of fun um, on and off campus. Also on the slide I've just put some of the other archaeological units on offer, so you might be interested in those. Um, there, there are a lot of interesting things. Do go to the LMS for the full gory detail. So for example, when I call it up, Oh, I thought I had called it up, never mind. We'll use the very quick steam-powered internet of UWA. So UWA and this, uh, there we go. Now you'll see a very slightly different interface uh, because I am staff, um, but it's not very different. So we'll just call up 102. Uh, yes, I agree and continue. I've got, very, I've got a lot of units I teach, but there's this one. So. Over here, the Noongar for hello, and here you have all of the different um, um, bits of information about the unit. So the unit outline this year, you get taken through to this automated thingo, which gives you a whole lot of detail about the waiting, what's happening each week, all of those different kinds of things. You can see there we are, the staff, um, where the times and locations are, some of this I've already showed you on the thingo the lectures and tutorials, the unit readings, uh, the different kinds of assessment, all of those kinds of things. So um, hop on to this. The unit outline is where everything is in one place. Uh, have a look and do come on Monday, I think it's the 31st of July, no, Tuesday the 31st of July, and we'll kick off 
and any questions you have will be happy to answer them there and in the tutorials there will be tutorials in the first week and I'll also send out an email announcement to everyone. So from Ariane, Jess and myself Sven, um, look to see you there, look forward to getting our hands dirty. Thanks very much.